The Clemson Tigers are having a strong June on the recruiting trail. To help us break that down and understand what it means for the future of the Clemson Tigers, we have Jason Priester. Jason is the lead recruiting analyst for allclemsontigers.com. Jason, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, Megan. How's it going? Good, good. I figured, you know, I've, I've heard you. I thought you were great on that live show for all Clemson Tigers. I know you could tell me everything about every single player. I thought I thought we could play sort of a little bit of a game that would be more fun. Let's jump to 2025. So the 2024 class are sophomores. The 2025 class, the guys like Gideon Davidson, they're just coming in as freshmen. And, I want, and let's imagine Chris Vizina is getting his first year as the starting quarterback. Cade has had three years. And he's awesome. He went to the NFL. Everything went exactly according to plan. Vizina is now ascending. This is 2025. I want to know who you think some of his key weapons on offense are. So let's start with what has been sort of the bugaboo for Clemson lately, but the recruiting trail certainly looking better. Let's start at wide receiver. So let's just talk about sophomores, juniors, and, and kind of the red shirts for those years as well. So that would be Tyler Brown, who would be a junior that year, as well as Ronan Hannafin, Noble Johnson, and Cole Turner, who would be a redshirt junior that year in 2025, as well as Bryant Wesco and T.J. Brown, who would be sophomores. So of that group of uh, six wide receivers, your thoughts on them and maybe a couple guys who you think would really be the biggest weapons for that 2025 Clemson offense? Of those guys you just named, two of those two of those receivers are game changers. I, I think T.J. Moore and Bryant Wesco are absolutely program-changing type receivers you know they are dynamic they, they bring some they bring something to the table that's kind of been missing from the wide receiver room in recent seasons I, I love guys like Noble Johnson I think Ronan Hannafin brings a lot to the table um there are a lot of things I like about Tyler Brown he is extremely twitchy and fast and all that good stuff but but there, there's just a little bit there's just another added dimension with, with guys like Wesco and, and TJ Moore um Clemson's had extreme difficulty with, with getting those chunk plays past couple of seasons. Wesco and Moore excel at stretching the field, making those contested catches. Wesco in particular is fantastic at going up and high pointing the ball and making those kind of catches in traffic. And both can be extremely reliable. Red zone targets, they have the size. And they both had that speed that's been missing from Clemson's offense at wide receiver anyways. I know West Coast speed's been heavily talked about, widely publicized and all that, but don't discount the speed of T.J. Moore. He, he's got some wheels, too. Um, I saw a tweet the other day. I think he was clocked at, I want to say, 20.9 20 .9 miles per hour or something like that. Whatever it was, it was in the 95th percentile. And that's kind of eye-opening. Yeah, yeah. And he's not even the fastest of the two, which is just crazy. So that's encouraging to hear that the two they brought in you know, uh, Noble Johnson was a four-star, but, you know, not all four-stars are rated the same. I like to look at the uh, the four-digit number that 247 gives, and when you look at that, you can see the gap is kind of big. Um, Brian Wesco is the highest rated, according to that, going all the way back to Rosmo, Roscoe Crosby. So you got to go back 20 years, and that includes T. Higgins. Um, so, yeah, absolutely huge recruit for, for Clemson there. All right, let's look at tight end. So the tight ends who will be in that kind of age range of sophomore juniors in, in 2025, uh, Marcus Dixon, uh, Olson, Pat Henry, they'll be juniors. Josh Sapp would be a redshirt junior. And Christian Bettenker, who's in uh, this, this up, the class of 2024, would be a sophomore of that group. Who stands out to you? Not just the best recruit as they come in, but, you know, thinking about 2025 and, you know, veterans, you know, are going to have their advantage. But, but who jumps out to you? Bettinger, he, he's one of the best tight ends in the 2024 class. He is, I think, he's six foot five, well, 230 pounds or whatever it is already. Um, he, he he's he kind of reminds you a little bit of Jake Brenny's tool. Brings that athleticism to the tight end position. You split him out wide. He is going to be a matchup nightmare for opposing defenses. And that's not to take anything away from Olsen Pat Henry, Marcus Dixon. I think both those guys have a little, lot of upside. I just think Bettinger is more polished coming out of high school than both those guys. And I think Bettinger's ceiling's higher than those guys. Although I do think they could be good players and contribute to this offense. I, I just think Bettinger's on a little bit different level compared to those other two guys. 
And I and I, I also I think there's a lot to like about Josh Sapp, kind of a developmental guy at that position. I think he's got a lot of tools to work with. But again, I I just think Ben is just kind of on a level all by himself. So my understanding of Ben Curry is, is, is he's quite like uh, Burning Stool and that he's kind of a receiving tight end first, but given his size, you would think you can coach him up to be a good blocker. Is that is that a fair assessment? That would be that is exactly how I would describe it. He's going to have to work on some blocking skills when he gets here. Same in the same fashion Jake Burning Stool did, and you know a lot of tight ends have had to do this. So for some of them, it's a big adjustment coming out of those offenses they play in in high school. It's going to be the same for Ben Cure. But if we're talking 2025, he's already got a year in the system, and he should be getting acclimated to that kind of stuff by then. Yeah, it's almost the reverse of Davis Allen. I feel like he was a good blocker from the get-go and became a good good receiving threat, kind of the opposite for the for uh, Benton Kerr and Burning Stool. All right, um, folks, if you're enjoying this video, please like it. Please subscribe to this channel. It really helps it grow, so I would appreciate that. Jason, let's look at the remaining position of running back, and I think this may be the most interesting one. So again, talking 2025, thinking ahead, you got Jarvis Green out of Dutch Fork High School. He'd be a junior in 2025. You got Jay Haynes out of Alabama. Keith Adams Jr. would be a redshirt um, junior. And then David Ajamame would be a sophomore out of Cobb County right by me. And then Gideon Davison would be a true freshman out of Virginia. So in 2025, who's making their mark? I love both those guys Clemson got in the 2023 class and Jarvis Green and Jay Haynes. I think both were severely underrated. They're, they're a little bit, you know, they're different kind of backs than, say, Gideon Davidson or Jean Ramey. Um, I think Davidson is probably the more well-rounded back of those four guys. But I think there's a lot to like about a Jean Ramey, too. He's, he's extremely fast. He's a patient runner. From what I've seen, you know, he's not had a chance to be the guy at his high school yet. We're going to learn a lot about him this year during his senior season. But for me, you know, I mean, Davidson is that guy. I mean, you, you just watch him. I watched him work out at Davos camp a couple weeks ago. And, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, you know it when you see it. And he's it. He has everything you want to see in a running back. I've seen people questioning his hands. But he showed those hands off at camp, man. He made some multiple impressive-looking catches. He, he looked like he looked like he had been doing it forever. Receiving out of the backfield was not going to be a problem for him. But, you know, a very – again, like I said about his young man, he's a very patient runner. He's got great field vision, runs between the tackles. He can get it around the outside. Um, eyes always in the right spot. That, that's, that's what you want to see from a running back, in my opinion. And I think he's just got it all. Well, I won't claim to be an expert quite like you, but I did watch the tape for both Ajamame and D Davidson. And what stood out to me is I, th I thought Ajamame looked excellent, making great cuts, didn't kind of dance in the backfield. Gideon Davidson, the tape looked almost silly because it was just plays that shouldn't be possible. And I couldn't – it was almost like the tape was less useful because it was so good. And I don't I, – I couldn't tell – is his competition just bad because those linebackers and safeties look silly? Or is he just so outrageously good? I mean, he looked like a C.J. Spiller kind of superstar. I think it's a combination of the two. I think the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. It's not the greatest competition he plays up there in Virginia, um, plays at that little Christian academy up there. So it's not going to be the best of the best in that state. But I do think he is also really, really good. All but right. I, well, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I like, you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of selling a Jama May here short a little bit. I think Clemson has put themselves in position to be or do have a very dynamic running back room by the time we get to 2025 because I love what Jarvis Green brings to the table. I love Jay Haynes. There's a lot to like about both those kids. Um, you know, I think both, I think Jay Haynes. Let's just say I think Clemson got a lot of value with both those guys in that class. But I just think Davidson is kind of, you know, like I talked about with some of those receivers, they're a difference maker. He is a difference maker. Maybe Ajama May's got the potential to be that guy because I think he's a little underrated right now too, you know, not having done a whole bunch of camps, not having been the guy at high school. Again, we'll see. We'll, we'll find out more about him. But, but the – Little bit you've I've actually watched of his film, you know, it, it is very impressive. So I think Clips is 
going to be stacked at running back come 2025. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, Jarvis Jarvis Green, Jay Haynes, Keith Adams Jr., not the first guy on Clemson's board, and people were really ragged on C.J. Spiller. But from early returns, we've, we've, it seems like we're feeling good that they were bargains at in the, in, 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 in minimum. But then these next two classes in 2024 and 2025, Spiller definitely got his guy. Both four stars. Ajama may kind of a lower four star, but nonetheless a four star. And then Gideon Davidson, just a, a stud recruit that everyone wanted. Uh, Jason, thanks thanks for joining. Um, I'll let you have the final word. Yeah, I was going to say I think CJ Spiller is quickly quieting that talk that he is a weak link on the recruiting trail. I get it; they struggled a little bit in, in the 2022 class and the 2023 class. I always maintain that when you got underclass, two underclassmen like Will Shipley and Phil Moff, it's going to make it that much more difficult to land those higher rated backs. And I think that is a lot of what we saw in those classes. Get the or you know 2022 and 2023, I meant, but. You get to 2024 and 2025, he has hit on his guy both times. And not only hit on him, he has locked him up extremely early. Um, and to me, I, I just think he has done a heck of a job over there, you know, since he's been named the running backs coach, not just on the recruiting trail. Just, I mean, look at that running back room, man. It's, it might be one of the best coach positions on the team. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there was any doubt he was coaching them well. Um, with the production they had, but now with these two hits in 2024 and 2025, I think folks are are really happy with them. And I think they certainly want it to be. They wanted it to work. So that's that's great. Hey, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. We're going to continue this conversation in a couple more videos. But for now, Jason, thank you. Appreciate it, Ryan.